But but with this, it's, it's just like it's smaller in my pocket. You know what I mean? I like it. The, cool. the, the the fold is like a, a fucking tablet. It's true. So are we recording? Yeah, we, we are, are recording. Yeah. Okay. Today so we we have I'm a the first one to swear for the first time ever. Yeah. Hey. I didn't know we were recording. No, wow. I fucking didn't do it. Uh, yeah, so sorry, Brett James. We Martin. have a guest today. Yes. I lost a, all credibility. A, a polarizing guest. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't have Pri- Prime Minister Justin Trudeau on the podcast today. We have something even better. Someone even no, better. I feel like that dipshit would do our show. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anything to stay in the news. <laughs> Get him a box of water. Just watch him open it for an hour. Yeah. Uh, we have a guest, a dear friend of dear dear friend of the show. I haven't seen him in a while. Very excited for him to finally come by. Dave Wheeler, welcome to Whiskey Tango Podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's, um, it feels familiar between uh, the gentleman sitting next to me and yeah. yourself. And Dave, I feel like we've known each other forever. Yeah, it was kind of an instant connection. And actually, I just noticed you have a hair tie around your wrist. Yeah. yeah. And I wore one for years. Years, really, yeah. years and years and years. And I, uh, t- I, I wore one for so long to the point that my buddy bought me. A it's pack. like a, a Greek prayer bracelet. Oh, that, wow. that you put on, and once it tightens, it, it can never come undone. Oh. And That's cool. as fate would have it, I was on set one day uh, as a body double, and they only needed my left hand. It was a shower scene, Aww. and they only need... Of all the parts of my body which I'm willing to expose, yeah. they needed my left wrist, so they had to cut it off. No uh, way! And, uh, oh, bummer. But uh, the, the hair tie around, so r- right down the hair tie around the wrist, uh, I feel like you and I have been buddies for a long yeah, time. the same yeah. name, both tobacco chewers. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're both chasing death. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're listening to Whiskey Tango Podcast. Thank you for being a friend. Before we started, we were talking about um, uh, tobacco and different flavors and whatnot and stories. And it's funny over the past six months or so because I've struggled with tobacco since I was 13 years old. I've been trying to really try to figure out. I think you're pretty good. I started up. (laughs) (laughs) Struggle with the addiction part. I've quit. I've not. I've quit. I've got back and forth. Uh, At one point, after my second kid was born, uh, my my wife asked me to quit, and so I quit for three, four years, and then. After uh, after I lost my my job in radio for a period of time, I, my hands got fidgety. I needed something to do. I didn't want to go back to chewing tobacco, so I started smoking cigarettes. And now it's a combination of cigarettes and chewing tobacco. Oh, and <laughs> quitting sucks. And I've tried doing cold turkey and the medications and everything. And it's just I'm, I'm not giving up quitting. I'm not quitting quitting, but I'm just taking a break from quitting. But did you ever do the gum? The Nicorette gum? Yeah, but like an idiot, I thought it was like a gum that you chew forever, and I puked because I was just basically hammering back nicotine into my system. It ends up being so expensive yeah. because I would go through like two packs a day Oof. because I would chew the gum like I chew tobacco where I throw one out and instantly I'm like, I, you, I need more. Right. And you don't have one piece at a time. Like I'm not a four-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> so I have like three, four pieces in my mouth at a time. So you hammer through a pack and a pack is like 10 bucks. Really? The, like they're for like the nine How many? I, I would buy like I, I think Costco would sell like 120 packs in a box or something. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And and you hammer through that because you're just you, you it's there's that fixation and you need it and I don't even know I don't get anything from the tobacco anymore. Mm. It's the nicotine. It's just or, or sorry, the, sorry, I don't get anything. I don't know if I get anything from the nicotine, but my brain just goes. It goes in. It's like morning coffee. Yeah, okay. I don't think coffee does anything for me. But, but if you knowing don't, but if I you have don't get it, if you don't get it, then you're moody. Yeah. And, uh, right. If someone gave me a warm cup mm-hmm. and didn't tell me it was in it, but or it said it was coffee, mm-hmm. and, it, and it was decaf, I, I think it's such a placebo, placebo now where yeah. I would just be like, yeah, okay, I'm fine. I'm good. Oh. And you just like trick me. If you gave me Trident and said it was Nicorette, I'd probably or or these pouches yep. are just like it's actually mud in there and you've been doing it for years. <laughs> I, I, I maybe I'm wrong, but it is just it's part of what I do. Well, try going forty eight hours. They say if you can go forty eight hours without nicotine, then the physical addiction is out of your system. It's just the habitual addiction after that. Yeah, yeah. habit. But, hard but the forty eight hours, it, it's some of the worst forty eight hours I've spent in my life. Like it's almost as if there's a rat in your brain going. 
Hey, motherfucker, you're not going to give me what I want? Yeah. I'm going to give you all of the worst thoughts you've ever had. I'm going to put them all right in the front of your cortex, yeah. and you're dealing with them now. Like yes. It is the worst. You know, I never had a problem with tobacco or anything like that, but what I, coffee is definitely something that it's a, con, it's a constant throughout the day. Like, we for a bit, we just did. I hammered back three shots of espresso, and I feel nothing. How are you not spinning in your chair? I have no idea. Like that's, but that's the thing. I have so much coffee throughout the day that it just caffeine just kind of the tolerance. No. Yeah, the tolerance is way too high. Like yeah, I'll drink, I'll drink a pot a day easily. Wow. Yeah. See, so, you know, I only have my one cup in the morning. Like today, I had a cup just to get rid of my headache, and then we went to the park line. But I'll only yeah. have my one cup just so I don't get a headache throughout the day. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I'm like, I, I'll have an energy drink if I go to the gas station or something. But other than that, it's kind of yesterday uh, midday. I had a violent headache. I'm like, what's wrong with me? And I'm, I'm thinking, I'm like, I've, I've had enough water, blah, blah, and I'm a, I didn't have a coffee this morning. Mm. I went, mm-hmm. I, noon, I, noon is like I, that. I, I, I snoozed my alarm and I went to the gym before I had a coffee. And uh, then I went on with my day as normal and it hit me at like five. I'm like, I haven't had, a, I had a coffee instantly better. Mm. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's, it, it's, it's so ridiculous how the body is just like, you need that drug. Mm-hmm. And, it, you know and it's I mean? a, it's a welcome drug. No one's ever like, oh, you're yeah. addicted to Coke. That's not really good for you, but I'm just, <laughs> yeah. but he can slam back a pot of coffee. And they're yeah. like, I don't know. He's just working. It's just so normal. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. Just, yeah, no, he's just doing his day job. Uh, do you find when you're trying, this is totally not where this I is, thought today is, yeah, was going, so. but when you're trying to stop one vice that another one goes way up. Well, look at it this way. When uh, people quit smoking, more often than not, they gain a substantial yeah. amount of weight, right? Because they're replacing that oral fixation. So if they can't be doing this with a cigarette, they're doing this with food. Whether right, it be yeah, yeah. Chips Denzel replaces else. it another way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> each their Frequently. own. Frequently. Yeah. Each their own. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's... It's five cents. <laughs> yeah. It's for, for I think for all of us tobacco users, it's, it comes down to an oral fixation, regardless if it's totally. uh, chewing tobacco or smoking. Chewing or whatever pens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, oh. pens don't stand a chance. If, uh. if I'm if I'm on a break from chewing tobacco, mm-hmm. pens don't stand a chance. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing I don't do is my nails. I've never been a nail chewer. No. Do you chew the cap or do you chew like the whole pen? The cap. Just I'm a cap chewer. Okay. Like I'll I'll, I'll, I'll like, like eat it. Oh yeah. Well, it was funny, like going back to trying to deal with like why am I so you know addicted to tobacco outside of the actual physical addiction, but. My mother was a smoker. She smoked in the house. She smoked in the car. Yeah. Uh, my uncle smoked. My other uncle smoked. Uh, my dad used to mix his weed and tobacco. So, I mean, it, it's been around me my entire life. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. almost like a comfort thing. And I'm so conscious of that now that I don't want to say I hide it from my kids, but if they're around, you know, I'm, I'm going to not make it so, hello, look at me. I'm smoking. <laughs> hello. Oh. <laughs> hello, young man. So, yeah. Now you're part of the family. <laughs> Did you have it in your family as well? Uh, my dad was a smoker. I actually, the, the funniest smoke. way... Uh, I found out my dad quit smoking. I had uh, he hit me a lot. <laughs> he beat the shit out of me. Um, uh, we were driving to Calgary. I had a, a tryout with the Calgary Dinos, and we had just gotten to Alberta. Like we had been out of Manitoba, drove through Regina. We got into Alberta, and I'm like, "You haven't had a cigarette?" Mm-hmm. As casual as can be, he's like, "I quit a couple days ago." I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I just decided I don't want to smoke anymore. I'm like, you've smoked my whole life. I'm 19 now, and you didn't tell anyone? He's like, oh, I don't want to make a big deal. <laughs> Good for him. Yeah, yeah super, super cool. But chewing, um, young young athlete, yeah. and the older athletes, he... monkey see, monkey do. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, 14 years old, the max that was down the street, the guy would sell you anything. He didn't care. Mm. Uh, so me and two buddies bought a puck. And we went out to Maple Grove Park, and I puked my <laughs> guts out. Wow! But the competitive fire in me, like you, I can get you, better. You at guys, this. you guys know oh. how I can be. You, you don't obviously, but you guys know how oh, I I've can seen be. The <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, He's a Dave. He gets it. I, I instantly was like, I'm gonna get good at this, <laughs> and and I just decided like, if, if the the guys who are older than me and better than me at football. If this is part of their lifestyle, it's going to be part of my lifestyle, and I can't be the guy that can't do it. Mm. So I just made myself good at chewing tobacco at fourteen. Yeah, and and then it's just something you you carry along with. And I've we talked on this a little bit, but I've chewed some awful brands just to have two. Like <laughs> there there used to be a Red Man Puck. Mm. I don't know if you remember really? that. Really? So it wasn't the loose it, it was the loose stuff, but it would come in a brick, and you'd break it off. 
And then you'd have oh. to let it sit in your mouth for a bit and, and literally like chew it to like moisten it up before you pack it. Oh, sure. My grandfather used to keep that in the um, sun visor of his tractor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd hammer back on it. Yeah. Right? And then, uh, oh, and then you learn that guys gut it as you get a bit older and you're like, okay, well, I'm going to gut it too. Oh. And, and you're like, uh. bring it on, stomach cancer. Like, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? But you're just like, if you can do it, I can do it. And, and that mentality has been with me forever for, for good and bad habits. Well, you know what I mean? I started gutting it because um, in, the in the house that I grew up. The water bottles are gross. What? <laughs> the water bottles are gross. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and case in point, uh, the house I grew up in, the recycling, you know, you put your can of whatever by the sink, and if it piled up to three or four, take it out to recycling. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, my mother was addicted to Coca-Cola. She loved oh, Coca-Cola. And this. she took oh. one and she kind of shook it like this, and she went, oh, there's some left. Like, who would? Yes. Oh, no. I mean, that's yes. the, and she knocked it back, and I swore after that that would never happen again, so I started gutting it just so I was like, Anyone oh. but mom, hey? And bingo. Yeah. Oh, no, Big I'm brother, not. little brother, sister, you're like, this is the funniest moment in my life. <laughs> yep. Mom does it, and you're like, I'm physically ill. One of, yep. the, one of the worst instances I saw of somebody really needing a fix was a goaltender that I roomed with, and uh, he had a Gatorade bottle that was full of juice pit, and he couldn't get any, and it was after hours, and we were in curfew in our room, and so he grabbed he a bunch of... He filters throw up. Yeah, he, he grabbed a bunch of paper towels and lined the sink, and then dumped it all out, waited for it to drain, and then just took a little pinch out of there. Oh, Oh, See, no, but if a meth addict shares a needle, they have a problem where yeah, that yeah. guy's just a goalie and an idiot <laughs> playing hockey. It's God, it's like that, that's a hilarious story. But but like you said, if, if someone's like, oh, I got blood poisoning sick. from sharing needles, they're like, you have a terrible problem. You're like, I literally siphoned uh, or filtered someone else's or my old two spit just yeah. to get it kind back of a combination fix. of everybody's uh, and it's just like you're hilarious that you're, you're such a hockey guy yeah. like you're such pe a people praise you for that no, like, no, 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 I, I feel that person has a problem All right, yeah. so I'm going to start the GoFundMe for safe tobacco chewing sites yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree yeah. now, I was, hockey I've seen yeah. these pouches like there'll be one like sitting on the like side mm -hmm. of my garbage bag where I'm like I can get a bit more out of that oh. if, if I'm all out you're ringing and, it up. And you just, no, you just throw it back in and you're like, yeah, I wasn't touching like, I didn't blow my nose on a Kleenex and it wasn't sitting on the Kleenex. And you're just like, I need one until I can get more. We used to call those ABCs and we'd put them back. Already been chewed. Already, already been chewed. chewed. Yeah. Um, have you ever chewed Siberia? No, but is, is, it, from, is it from Scandinavia? Cause, yeah. Because we got the big, big tins of like the actual snuff snuff where you guys go, yeah, 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 yeah up yeah, there. Yeah. That yeah. shit's for real. Oh yeah. But uh, the Siberia's Siberia comes... Insane. With an ex, the the puck comes with a an extra flap okay. for the ABCs. Yes, I, I have heard of those. I've never yeah. actually seen them. Amazing, but yeah, yeah, amazing couple, guys that I know that had a cup of coffee playing over in Europe were just blown away with the amount of selection, the different kinds. Like, yeah, like, like the, we pale in comparison here. And that, that's wow. how I heard about it because uh, Brett Learnout came back. And he's oh, like, yeah. dude, try this. It'll put you on your ass. I'm like, I've been chewing since before you were born. Nothing. And you put it in, you're like, Whoa. like your yeah. whole, your head feels like it's twice yeah. the size. And you're like, what just happened? By the way, this is a public service announcement for any young children out there. Don't start chewing tobacco, smoking cigarettes, or anything tobacco related. Yeah, apparently it becomes disgusting. Well, also, also because you horrible. can't afford it. And two, uh, our average listeners are 35 to 45. So if you're under 18 <laughs> and you listen to this, just stop. <laughs> <laughs> what? Where are your parents? Yeah, Dave, Dave, you'll be old enough to remember this. I think you might be too. Might be a little young for you, Denzel, but remember when they switched the age of tobacco uh, purchasing from 16 to 18? Yeah. Okay. No. You could purchase it. I had no 16. idea that, yeah. that was a thing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Back in, the, back in when I was growing up, 16 years old. That's so, news to me. You get $3 triples. <laughs> 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 oh, back in the 40s. Hey, right on. I think it's over in Denmark against Scandinavia. What they're doing is they're setting a date saying, okay, if you're born after this date, you just flat out can't buy it for the rest of your life. Like they're, 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 Oh, they're, wow. 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 Yeah. They're they're setting it's that date so, so kids growing up think we'll always just know like I'm not going to be able to buy tobacco yeah, try to wow. curb try to curb the habit. I um, remember in high school they everyone was freaking out because they were going to stop flavored cigars and flavored chew. I remember that. Yeah. That was the big one to get kids to stop doing it. It's like yeah. the kids you're stopping are already addicted to it. I'm just going to buy the rum colts, the rum and wine yeah. colts, and yeah. I'm just going to move on with my life. Like there's. Uh, they got rid of that too. It's bullseyes, no longer though. the rum and the rum and wine one. They're gone. Yeah, oh, yeah they're yeah. regular too. Oh shit! Uh, when I was in Folsom, the, yeah, the tips. Uh, they were like, "You're really loading up on this." And I'm like, "Well, <laughs> I'm from Canada, and you can't get flavored too." And I got you know buddies and blah blah blah. And they're like, "They're trying to stop it here too." No. And these two gas station attendants were up in arms. <laughs> they they were a bit more passionate about it than I was, <laughs> but there there it's it's just a matter of if if you make it illegal. We'll just find different ways to get it, mm. Mm. and like just regulate it. Like you know what I mean. P 
people got weed before it was legal. Mm. Um, and now that it's legal, it's just like, do you want good government stuff? Or are you going back to your guy who sells it out of his backpack? It's the same thing with, with tobacco or, or any banned substance. If you want it bad enough, there's people out there selling it. You, know what I mean? you, you can get the, you can get the red cigarettes. I mean, those like, you get them in a little baggie and whatnot, yeah, and, and roll I mean, them yourself. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So some yeah. of them you can, some of them come pre-rolled. But yeah, I mean, they've been doing that for generations. Yeah, it, it's always out there, mm. and I, I don't know what they think they're accomplishing by it. And, and you're like, what kids chew because it's mint? There's got to be here. some reason, like financially, where they're making more money. Like it costs too much money. That's the real reason. It's like ah, it's too much money to make flavored. We'll just stick to the winter green, and it's cheaper. It's got it. has got to be something. This would be a whole. A this would be kids. a whole government conspiracy episode if we got into uh, why they're doing that. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now you're talking about government conspiracy. Let's go. Let's go. No, but you you paint this like we care about your health and blah blah of blah. They but don't. but you sell three 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 dollar. Big Macs that are like 12, 1,200 calories, but you're like, hey, guess what? We're kids aren't buying tobacco anymore because it's not flavored. You're like, sure, it's just like they're hammering, you know, Big smoke Macs and mirrors. <laughs> it's just smoke and mirrors. Like people are dying for other reasons, and you you paint to, uh, tobacco is bad for you. Don't get me started on seed or vegetable oils. I will go off. I, I was gonna say th- this is the reason we don't want to start this. Yeah, thing. yeah. <clears throat> It'll be the most Brett James episode ever. <laughs> We're gonna walk in. It's gonna be Brett explaining with the red tape. And <laughs> the cigarette like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it hasn't slept in weeks. Where's Pepe Silvi? Where's Pepe Silvi? <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's so, move on to some Dave Wheeler stuff. Yeah, yes, I, I, I don't even know where to begin. Brett, well, I hear you have a new podcast. Uh, I don't have a new podcast. I'm I'm helping out with a new podcast. It's actually a fascinating story. So there's this guy by the name of Travis Ridgen, and he's a. Uh, not too dissimilar from you. He's a goaltender. Oh, God. So he's an idiot. Actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and he, uh, he he was a good average goaltender in junior. He's a good average goaltender in university. Once he finished that, he's like, I don't want to stop playing. And so he decided to keep playing. And he made this vlog on YouTube where he kind of documented his journey. And he went over to some of like the relegated leagues over in Europe and played there for a couple no way. of years. He just signed a new contract in Detroit, not with the Red Wings, with the <laughs> with the Motor City Rockers in the Federal League. Yes, the same Federal League that the Charlestown Chiefs played in in 1977. Slap cool. Shot. Wow. That right same on. league, the Federal League. Wow. So he's making $125 a week as a goaltender. <laughs> and he's I at, love it. And be, because he, he has this vlog and this podcast, he's actually able to supplement the money that he's missing out on, you know, from getting a real job and actually, and actually making it work. And so I was, I jumped, he asked and I jumped on board and we do a weekly show and I get to talk hockey and kind of follow his journey and help him out. So I'm really happy to do it. It's called slinging the biscuit. Uh, Biscuit is B I Z. Ah, that's why I couldn't find it. (laughs) Yeah. Slinging the biscuit. And uh, yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's about 45 minutes per show. And just being able to follow along through the eyes of somebody who's really living the dream. I know, I know you all, that's a cliche to say, ah, he's living the dream, but Here's a guy who just wants to keep playing hockey, and he's making yeah. it work. I mean, I give him a lot of credit for that. Totally. Yeah. And and, and the, to generate a second income from it yeah. is, is very cool, too. Mm-hmm. Anything Must you, be nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're losing money on this. Uh, you know how much these coffees cost this morning? <laughs> yeah. And that woman you bought, too. Like, freaking, now you're buying other people's coffees? God damn it, no. dude. You're blowing the budget here. <laughs> uh, it's okay. We have a merch. We have merch coming out, so we'll make millions off yeah. the merch. Millions. <laughs> Uh, millions. How, how was the transition from, I guess, I don't want to call it like, I guess unemployment to 106? Was it, was it smooth or was it? It's a, uh, it's, it's a lot less work compared to what I used to do, as you saw. Um, <laughs> yeah. So coincidentally, my, my wife and I, about uh, five months before my exit from my um, uh, last job, we started a podcasting company called Safety Net Studio. And the idea was that we were going to build a studio in our basement and just she didn't like the fact that I was always back in the studio working so much. And so she was the one that kind of talked to me. She's like, just build something in the basement. That way oh, you're yeah. home. You know, we got young kids. And I'm like, that makes total sense. So yeah. why don't we start a company? Like, future of broadcasting really is in podcasting. Not to say 100%. that radio is oh, yeah. gone or is going to go away. It's just another platform. Yep. There's a shift, though, for sure. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I've always said radio is a spice of life. And, and people say, oh, no one cares about radio anymore. No one does radio. It's like, I see more and more people getting behind a microphone, so there's got to be something to it. Yeah. Sure. So, but it, it, it's a situation where you have a plethora of options to what you want to put in your ears. And I think that's wonderful when it comes yeah. down to it. So we started the studio. And after I got uh, let go, I looked at my wife and I said, we're going to do a podcast. And she said, who's going to do a podcast? And she said, you and me. <laughs> and that following Monday, we started doing a daily podcast. And then we picked up uh, another podcast that we would produce and then record. And then another one. And then another one. At one point, we had 18 people coming in 
doing the podcast I didn't in our studio. I that many. Holy yeah. shit. And so I was producing all of those and working very long hours, but I was home, which was nice. And then the pandemic hit, and we couldn't have the podcasters anymore, and the advertisers on our podcast weren't open, so they couldn't advertise anymore, and everything just got worse and worse. And we thought, it's cool, we'll get Serb. Our business wasn't in business long enough for the government to uh, yeah. to give us any money, so we got no relief there. So we ended up selling the house and moving and whatnot. So it was a it was perfect Jeez. timing because I think you even remember me saying this on the podcast one time where I'm like, I don't think I'm ever going to go back. Then yeah, and, and I think there was a point too where even we were talking to you just hanging out, and it's like it's at this point it's like yeah, you weren't you were you were compl- not I don't want to say completely given up, but you were comfortable not going back i was comfortable almost. not going back and only that i was tired of chasing it because i just feel like i was blackballed like every yeah. program oh, yeah. director i reached out to across the country they're like sorry man there's just too much heat around your name yeah. right now and i was like okay i get it and uh yeah I, I was comfortable with the decision had been made and then when everything kind of you know fell from underneath us when the safety net let go yeah <laughs> um the opportunity came up and i jumped at it and i really enjoyed being back i forgot how much i missed being on live radio there is something to you know, doing a podcast and being able to go in and edit and polish it, but just live radio, live phone calls, there's nothing that beats it. And something you're good at and doing your whole life. It's mm-hmm. not like you probably, like riding a bike, you just probably hop right back in, right? Yeah, I mean, there was a couple of things here and there that I had to get used to, but uh, working with uh, my, my millennials was tough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, oh you're, my uh, God, you're, the shit One of your most recent good. show about the thumbs up, thumbs down there. Oh, I was listening to that. Holy God. time. I heard Come on, Daddy. Unbelievable. <laughs> What's this? So, oh, the thumbs up are getting the, the, the emoji is triggering. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently it's passive aggressive. Yeah. I, I, I heard, and that absolutely blew my yeah. mind. Mm-hmm. It's hard not to get mad, but like, yeah, I'd be me, me getting mad. I'm like, oh, I'm the old man now getting mad at kids. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're a dad now. <laughs> yeah, well, get off my lawn, whippersnappers. Yeah. Hey, I spent a lot of money on my lawn and some woman walked across it. I would literally almost ran outside with a golf club and was like, get the <laughs> fuck off my lawn. You just stepped on like $400 of the grass there. Moolah. You didn't pay Moolah. for it. Yeah. I'm literally, they're clipping it with scissors. I'm like, oh, they stepped on it. And, no, I'm not that yeah. hardcore. But so when you, so you were actually actively applying. Uh, towards the end of Safety Net Studios? Uh, not, well, it, so it had been the bumping up again on two years of me being in radio jail. And uh, <laughs> when this one came up, I mean, so my program director, Adam West, he, had, right. uh, he, he and I had kept in touch, even when we weren't working together, just in the industry is very tight and we would always kind of chat when we saw each other at events. But after I got let go, I called him up and I said, hey man, I'm not looking for a job. I know you don't have one, nor I don't, you'd be crazy to hire me. But <laughs> I said, uh, I need to see what the, the radio ratings are because the ratings came up twice a year. I said, we just meet it at Tim Hortons. I said, I want to take a quick few screenshots. And uh, we kind of kept in touch that way. And an opportunity came up at one of his radio stations. I didn't get it. And I think at that point I was just like, this is never going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he called me up and I said, yep, let's do it. And he said, I can offer you peanuts. And I said, I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah well, I don't have anything. So I'll take yeah, peanuts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That must have been, I can't even imagine the relief you must have had from that phone call. Like uh, just, was it just like a weight came off or was it like. Well, it was to the, okay. So uh, I agree. I, this is very involved, but I'll give you the, the Reader's Digest version. I grew up with two career parents and I was dropped off from babysitter to babysitter to babysitter. That was just the way my life went. And God love both my parents. They're both, they were both very successful in their careers. But when I had kids. I didn't want that for them. Yeah. So I did everything I possibly could. My wife was able to stay home uh, through both kids. And after everything fell apart with the studio and we ended up moving, my wife went back to work. And it killed me a little bit inside because mm-hmm. because my kids didn't have their, their mom at home anymore. Yeah. I mean, like my mother-in-law, she, she lives with us as well. Uh, so they, they had, uh, you know, Someone, a, a constant yeah. a steady yeah. figure. Mm-hmm. But it, it just, it broke my heart. I'm like, man, I've worked so hard for this. You know, like, I, I don't want this to happen. And so being able to go back and have that option once again, felt really good. Yeah, yeah I can I sure. just, even just getting to know you over the la- of the, the years of no radio because I was I was I think we were all were fans of you on the actual radio. Like I whether it was ninety two or ninety seven when you, they bounced back and forth, mm. that was confusing. But I was the only radio station I listened to. Mm. Whether where I just followed you around and then I couldn't believe the turnaround between the firing and then the podcast starting Monday morning. I was yeah. like, oh, I wonder what he's up to. And then tech Twitter. Oh, he has a podcast that's half an hour long every single morning. Perfect. So, Guess how long my drive is? Half an hour. Let, let's rewind to that. How difficult was it doing a daily yeah. podcast? It, You're a madman, honestly. Well, <laughs> honestly, it, it, I mean, I was doing that kind of work anyways. And the best part was I didn't have to get up at 4.30 in the morning anymore. Yeah. My, my, my wife and I could pick a time throughout the day when we we're going to record it and edit it trying to figure out the right balance of trying to make it sound familiar to that radio audience that I was trying to drag over mm. but still trying to make it sound like something new and working with my wife. By the way, I always laugh when people are like, 
you and your wife have such good chemistry. I'm like, I fucking hope so. We've been yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I married her. Uh, but, yeah. she, but she's been great. But yeah, trying to find that balance is good. It took us a little while, like anything. I mean, I'm sure if you guys go back and Seven watch the first episode of these, yeah. right, exactly, yeah. until you find that oh, whatever our, our works. first 20, so. I, I, don't even, I wish I could delete them, honestly. I wish I could just <laughs> erase the first half of the show. Um, but coming up with, with content, I never even thought about the chemistry. Like, that, that seems like the easiest thing with your wife. Mm -hmm. um, but coming up with content daily... Well, again, that's something I was used to. I mean, I was, uh, you know, go to radio school, you find out current events, you come up with little bits, this and that, what's trending, music news you can use. And by the way, music news you can use is be turned into a giant on its own. Um, but yeah, it's just, I don't know, it was, just, it was just natural. I was trying I to do so. terrestrial radio on a podcast. You know what yeah. I think I love yeah. the most about the podcast was it was everything that had radio except the crappy part, which I hated the music. Yeah. <laughs> when music came on, I'm like, no, no, they were just, I, I, I want to hear what the Jets were doing. Like, yeah. I want to hear, oh, this celebrity did this. And you're like, ah, all right, after Stone Temple Pilots. I'm like, no, boo! Like, <laughs> first of all, that's showing your age. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's the first band that came to mind. I couldn't think of it. But number else. two, just to kind of peel the curtain back a little bit, um, my program director, when he and I sat down and tried to figure out how the morning show was going to work. I said, how many songs are you playing in the morning? He goes, anywhere between 12 and 14. I said, okay, I want to scale that back to like four. In four, what, you're there for In an hour. Four, in an hour, in an oh, hour. per hour. Yeah. Okay, I was like, yeah. five hours? That's hardly yeah. anything. No, I said, I want to scale that back to about four songs an hour. And he's like, that's insane. No, that's crazy. Why? And I said, listen, again, going back to that whole, there's so much out there. People can get music on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Music, anywhere. They're yeah. vinyl collections. Yep. I said, when it comes to terrestrial radio, let's give them something that they can only get yeah. here. Yeah, and that's us having that banter, talking about you know, the yes. and doing sure. those yeah. things. That's yeah. that's what I like about the radio. I, again, you put it perfectly. I can get music wherever I want. Mm -hmm. I want to listen to Dave and <laughs> you know, anything. Yeah. And then... yeah. Good time to transition into your sponsor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're buying coffee. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's you know, the, 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 I know we say this every week, but Parkline Coffee has really been a great sport. Like well, Janice let's, is just put this on air, maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but honestly, like for. We're three idiots, morons, essentially, <laughs> yeah. give Welcome or take. Industry. <laughs> and that's why we're like, oh, we're perfect for a podcast. We're, we're three dumb guys. Yeah. We'll have other dumb guys listening to us, right? Yeah. And that's what we've built. But for people, someone like Parkline Coffee, the nicest, sweetest woman in the world, owns this cute little coffee shop. She's on amazing. Board, yeah. And she's like, yeah, I don't know, film Brett pretending to be drunk in our, sh in our, yeah. <laughs> in our coffee shop. Yeah. And then we'll just have customers in behind you guys. Really? Half these ideas were her idea. Yeah, she she came up with all these ideas wow. and encourages us, encourages our idiocy. Allowed Dave to go and make. A I got to of make drinks things. there. Come on, yeah, yeah. yeah. greatest sponsor ever. I, oh, yeah. she's fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. And and you know what? On top of it, they cultivate a culture that any customers that have been in there when we're filming are very cool. Like, no one's concerned about three knuckleheads, one of them wearing a mask, filming yeah. stuff. Yeah, like they're all cool with it. So that that culture. Yeah. They've got Chris Farley on the wall. Yes. They've yeah. got Rodney yeah, Dangerfield yeah, yeah. on the wall. That's like, very true. It, it's just a very cool culture that they've made. And it, it's very South Osborne, too. Absolutely. Um, but their Janice is absolutely fantastic. Let, yeah. me, let, let me let me say this real quick. And I, and I love the whole, you know, oh, we're just three knuckleheads. We're just three idiots. And and, and, and I get it. That's why but, I brought them. But, all three, no, but listen, but all three of you guys are intelligent in ways that you probably haven't recognized yet. And I'm going to give you a reason why. You look at a lot of these comedians that we've grown up watching, like like Bill Burr and all these guys. They're yep. all doing podcasts now, yep, right? Yep. And you get to actually hear the intelligence behind a lot of these jokes and the way their brain works. My totally. Sure. Part, yeah. So I mean, totally. could any of us, you know, do uh, algebra or, or pre calc? No. Yes. But, Absolutely not. Yeah. yeah there's <laughs> well, no, there's the no engineer shot. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No one <laughs> have the high chair. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do it every day. <laughs> but the, I, I've always said that really funny people. You can't be that funny without having a certain level of intelligence behind it. There, there for sure is. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we all play up the the dumb. idiocy yeah. of us. Um, not that I'm like I'm really smart and I pretend to be dumb. Like <laughs> specific I'm things. dumb in a lot of areas sure. of life. Like not dumb, but oblivious, unlearned. Mm -hmm. But, um, but it's because I focus so hard on the things that I'm good at. Yeah, yeah, Bingo. yeah. Um, sure. But I also allow myself to come out of my box and look like an idiot because I'm just accepting of like I don't know anything about this right. you know what I mean mm -hmm. um, and I think I think there's strength in, in that for all of us and we have chemistry I think it helps that we sure. that we work off of each other or if things aren't going well we will sit down here for 20 minutes half yeah. an hour and be like okay guys we're we need we're doing this and we need to do this right yeah. like, or you, um, you take like 
people I talk to about our show are, are friends of mine, so yeah. they're not going <laughs> to talk shit too talk much. shit about me. <laughs> yeah, but they, they'll be like, oh, Denzel kind of rubs me the wrong way. I'm like, good. <laughs> he, he he's a yeah. level ten of himself on the show. Like, oh yeah, you know, we, we portray you as like the bratty little brother or the idiot or or you know what I mean. I, I've no, I know my and role. <laughs> you, you know what I mean. And yeah. a little bit, you are the little brother. But you turn it up a few notches for the show. Now, now I just gave away our secret ingredient, but you know what I mean? Damn it, now I have to turn um, it up 20 notches? Wow. Like, is Brett an alcoholic? Yeah, but does he have a problem? No. no. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, on on paper, I am it, an alcoholic. It's, yes. all, it's all exaggerated versions like, of ourselves. Like, Dave doesn't um, breathe that loud, but it's pretty loud. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> but I do need a machine to sleep. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and, and that's actually, uh, I'll bring up a name. I don't know if you guys are on... I don't know your relationships with anyone, but uh, Ace Burpee. Mortal uh, enemies is what I was just laughing. I was just laughing at the Ace, mortal enemies. If I can take a sec. So Ace and I have actually been competing since we were in college. Really? We uh, went to rival colleges in Calgary. He went to Mount Royal. I went to State. Uh, we both worked at the Calgary Hitman. I was the announcer. He was the mascot. He was one of the best mascots Oh, ever. he would be a golden yeah. mascot. Totally. Wow. I never knew that. Him and another guy, uh, Todd, uh, were kind of like a tandem. Like, they would switch out and come up with these insane ideas. And the yeah. one time, so keep in mind, this is in the Saddle Dome. Um, they had retractable, uh, the, that, that aluminum uh, uh, stadium stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. they could roll back for rodeos and that kind of stuff. And so it would extend out. It was great for sliding on with, like, a crazy carpet. <laughs> So <laughs> that's brilliant. When, I love that. <laughs> when, when the flames are playing, they have these little stools set up for the cameraman to be down in the corner and be able to set up. And so they had this corner that they slid down. And they found this was the best one. They unfortunately didn't take that stool out after the flames game was done. So Burpee goes ripping down the stairs. In his uh, the name of the mascot was the Bulk. So imagine the Hulk, but naming rights. Oh okay, yeah. yeah. And yeah. He goes down and every he'd crash into the boards all the time. People go ah, oh, clap and whatnot. Yeah. And he'd stand up and give a big wave. So he comes down this one time and he smashes his head uh, through his, through the mouthpiece oh, onto no. onto the stool, and he stands up and everyone's like, "Hey!" And then blood starts coming down. <laughs> oh no! He ended up getting stitched for probably about forty five stitches through his noggin. Holy! Yeah, yeah. That's so, like a, I think you should leave skit. Yeah, so, <laughs> that's that's to smoochy is what that is. So, the... <laughs> so he he graduated a year before me, and so I was in Calgary a year later. He got a job here in Winnipeg as a writer, then started doing evenings. And when BJ of BJ and Hal left. I mean, Ace is a very likable guy. From what I understand, I wasn't here yet because I didn't get hired, but all the brass was like, oh, it's going to be Ace and Hal. It's going to be Ace and Hal. It's going to be a great show. The program director at the time said, I'm not putting a guy who's been doing evenings for six months onto a morning show with a veteran like Hal. Yeah. It's just yes. not going to work. I mean, plus, they're, both of them are too big of, of stars yep. to, to make that work. So they hired me instead. Ace's feathers were ruffled a little bit, so the first opportunity he had to jump to go over to Virgin at the time, he left. And ever since then, we've, we've just been competing. We're like Batman and Robin, you can choose whoever, or Batman and the Joker, you can choose yeah. whoever you want that to be in, in that analogy. But I, I remember... you make I, a better Joker. What's that? I think you make a better oh, Joker. <laughs> he's got the purple shirt on. So he's <laughs> and, and he and I have seen each other at events over the years and stuff, and, and I realized probably about two or three years in that... I, I would reach out because I mean, like, we're all in the same job, you know, all the yeah. same colleagues. We can sure. compete and still be friends. And he he always kept me at arm's length. And I realized that he doesn't want to be too good of friends because there is that competition. I yeah. respect that. So it's not yeah. that we don't like each other, don't get along. It's just that mutual respect of yeah. you're over there, I'm over here, yeah. and that's good. Yeah, I, it was. Always, I know who we're having on next week. <laughs> yeah. It was always funny. Uh, just thinking of how like you're a little bit more edgier, and he's the family, like. I would always listen to Hot 103 when I was a kid with my family in the car, but then as I got older, I'm like, nah, I need someone to push the buttons a little bit or push yeah. the edge a little bit. It's it, But yeah, the Batman and Joker, the good yeah, and the bad, yeah. that's a perfect analogy. Mm -hmm. But it's just um, always just funny. Like I just picture you guys as mortal enemies and like, You'd walk into the same event and then everyone would stop and be like, oh no, they're gonna. They, then they shake hands, just really aggressive handshake, and then you don't talk oh, to them. Oh, just wait. One, so one day, I don't know when it's gonna happen, but the doors are gonna burst open. There's gonna be doves flying behind, and Ace and I are gonna be hand in hand skipping into the room. <laughs> <laughs> we kiss and made up. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as I started saying what I was saying, I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't name drop here. Mm -hmm. But um, in, in what we're saying to like exaggerated versions of ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, when I was younger, I wasn't a big fan of him on the radio because I'm a low energy guy, mm. and oh, he's he's high, he's high voltage, yeah. right? And I'm like, this guy, like, there's so much energy, I, I can't really handle it. Um, and you get to know the guy, and super calm, mm -hmm. one of the nicest, one of the nicest. Like, he, I probably see him once a year, did, did but he's one of my favorite first, people. Yeah. He he uh, emceed my fundraiser. Um, he'll he'll do anything, and he's always down for a good cause. And and that's where you kind of learn. And even like even you right now is not 
the what radio. I expected. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that's good. It, 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 it's great. Um, but it's a lesson learned. Sorry. Uh, no, it's a lesson not. learned on uh, radio or podcasting is, is a medium that you can't be... You can't be down here because people mm-hmm. are like boring. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You, you have to turn it up a notch um, and you have to have these pitch changes and whatnot to keep people like, why do you raise his voice? I got to go back and listen to that. Mm-hmm. Why, why is this? You know what I mean? It, it keeps people engaged. Well, on your point about Ace, Ace is the type of guy that after you leave a room with Ace Burpee, you're going to feel better. 100%. He, he, he just makes you feel good. He yep. has that kind of energy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, with mine, uh, if you're in a room with me, you're probably going to walk away going... Damn it! I can't believe he said something like that and pissed me off. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just Maybe kidding. Fox News has a point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but back to your earlier point about you know like uh, sometimes you have to disagree. I always uh, I've always said that nobody holds a glass up to a wall to hear people getting along, right? It's like oh shit, people are arguing next door. Mm-hmm. So what are they points. arguing about? So there's times on our, sh- our show right now that if I make a statement, even if Tyler agrees with me, he's going to take the opposite side. Yeah, mm-hmm. because there there has to be. Fr- I always say I, I I pray we never agree on everything. Yeah, I mean, it goes back to the old Napoleon Dynamite. Hey, you like stuff? Yeah, I like stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, as I, that's actually one of the the things I've learned with with acting and getting into acting, because mm-hmm. uh, I'll I'll get an audition for a two liner, mm-hmm. and my coach is always like, find the conflict in the scene. Bingo. And I'm like, well, it's a, a dad who's praising his son. He's like, there's conflict in every scene, or it's boring. Mm-hmm. And when you start to look for that. And, and you're finding it and you're like, oh, okay, I get this. Yeah. And it's the same thing like you and Tyler. Even if he agrees, it's boring. Mm-hmm. You're right, man. Let's move on. Yeah. Like, okay, well, what could have been five or ten minutes is now ten seconds and we just move on to the next thing. Nobody cares. Yeah. So, yeah, 100%. Like, it, it's, it's the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Are you telling me he actually likes the thumbs up? Is that what you're telling me right now? Well, he and I actually spent the weekend, so we have a thing now. Just uh, and fighting all weekend. <laughs> uh, just to give you a little recap, we had a battle on the show because the Gen Zs are saying thumbs up or passive aggressive, and the boomers and the Gen Xers are going, thumbs up means good, it's always mean good, you can't take away our thumbs up. And uh, he and I spent the entire weekend now, uh, instead of sending emojis now, we actually take a picture of ourselves like, thumbs up, or thumbs down, or... I don't know. And so we actually act out the emojis now just, just to make sure that everything is coming yeah. clear. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> if I hit the 14 parlay that I have put on UFC next weekend, I win $275,000. Yeah. So <laughs> I'll, buy, I'll pay off my mortgage yeah. and then with the leftover 50K. What I'll, do you got uh, on the ticket? I picked because a buddy so I went to a social last weekend and I saw a buddy that I haven't seen in a while and he's a degenerate like even worse than Dave like mm. that says a lot <laughs> awful <laughs> awful so his bet 365 is like where the texting should be because that's how often he's in bet 365 oh, yeah. so I was like can you explain it There's to nothing me wrong with that. he's like can, I was, cause I've always wanted to get into it because I don't see but I don't think I have an addictive personality so I don't think I would be like hundreds of dollars a week you know kind of thing so I was like can you just explain it to me he goes oh no no we'll just make a bet I'll just give me 10 bucks and we'll make a bet I'm like all right cool so he goes what do you want to bet on I'm like oh let's do UFC big UFC card next weekend he goes okay so here's he's like do you want to pick winners do you want to pick uh what round they're in and I was like okay no just win or lose let's keep it easy win or lose so we went through the list I had uh Sugar Sean beating Peter Yan which is like a thousand to one pale yeah, or something just a huge <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah. I was like, ah, how do you say no to that? Right. Yeah. So if I hit all fourteen on a ten dollar bet, I get two hundred seventy five k. I was like, that's that's just fun to think about until you get there. You know, what I mean, you've already yeah. got the money spent. Your head, like you said, I'm paying off the mortgage. I'm buying new equipment. I'm doing all of this. Your odds are low, but yeah. God love you. I hope you. Yeah. You want to hit like the first two, so you have a little meat on the bone. Sure. And you, you, you get like, maybe this can happen. And then and the third leg just falls apart. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. But now he keeps sending me screenshots of him adding to that leg. Love it. So it's at like $10 million or something of yeah. like, he, he put 50 here, 50 there, 50 there. He goes, no, no, you still get your 275. I get 9.6 though. Like, yeah. All right, oh, whatever. Good right. for you, man. You're, you can do it for sure. Well, Dave, you're a football guy. I mean, yeah. I'm sure you filled out a few pro line tickets where you take, you know, the long shots, the ties and everything. Like, totally. like back 10 years ago, we didn't have the option of doing a one game bet. You have to go to seven. There's like yeah. 10 degenerates <laughs> around <laughs> one. <laughs> hey, Doug. Oh, hi, man. How's things at home? Good, good, good. Yeah. Good to see you. What are you betting on today? Oh, okay. You okay, literally okay. get to know guys yeah. just from filling out your pro line. Totally. <laughs> I've done pro yeah. for a little yeah. bit. Yeah, that's uh, when I worked at Popeyes. I mean, the guy that would work, he would. Uh, we would always do Sundays. And yeah. Sunday at 10 a.m. when we opened, he would show up half an hour late with my with each a pro line. Each yeah. of we would just watch sports all mm-hmm. day. I'm like, this is the um, life. <laughs> yesterday, I had uh, Mississippi, Texas, Oklahoma, and Alabama. My first three hit. The last one was Alabama, so I'm like guaranteed, That's a guaranteed win. Mm. Uh, they lost 49 to 48 or something oh. like that. Oh. And, and, and it's just one of those. I, I could have cashed out at 350 and, instead of waiting for 420 
And I'm like, well, I don't leave $70 on the table. Mm. And then you just see them like, how did Tennessee score again? Tennessee scored again. And you're like, well, Alabama's going to do Alabama things. Mm. And then they, they just did it. And then you're like, <laughs> idiot. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, but that's the joy of gambling is chasing that thrill. Like my buddy Sean and I, we'll, we'll make crazy parlays where you're like six or 11 leg parlays. <laughs> and both of us have agreed like, we chase the loss almost as much as chasing the win. Well, like, you, you, Dennis Rodman said it well. He goes, there's nothing like that feeling. It's not a good one, but there's nothing like that feeling of watching somebody pull all the chips away from yeah. you at the table. He goes, it's just, he goes, it's hard to describe and it almost yeah. becomes addictive. Not that you want to lose, but when you do, you're like, there's that feeling. Yeah. yeah. Feel, well, Norm like went something. bankrupt twice. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and you're, you're literally just, you're chasing almost any feeling at a certain point yeah. where good or bad, you just want to feel something. You're just and so it, dumb terrible way to live and someone who doesn't gamble <laughs> wouldn't get that mm. but there's a thrill in just like I put a hundred dollars down and these three things are very normal but I could have doubled my money or it can be a five times win with this crazy thing mm. and you're like you just guaranteed your loss but you still sacrifice that hundred dollars <laughs> and then you justify it we're like well I'll spend that on eating out this month anyway so I just won't eat out as much and you're like yeah you will Charles, but yeah. Charles, Charles Barkley always says you don't have a gambling problem if you can afford your debts 100% yeah. that's yeah. true and now remember yeah. if you're under the age of 18 much like the chewing tobacco do not get into gambling yeah. or yeah. 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 alright what else can we get into well, <laughs> any hard drugs we can talk about well we talk about tobacco and gambling let's do, let's do guns yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Norm uh, you know, one of my favorite stories is he randomly threw like 20 grand into the ocean in, in Atlantic City yes yeah. he was just like he had this money he knew he was going to spend it on gambling he had just gone bankrupt he's like I'm going to spend this on gambling, so what? I don't want to do that. What am I going to do with it? He literally threw the money into the ocean. Yeah, okay, that's the doesn't make any sense. Exactly, yeah. it doesn't. But he's also one of the smartest people that ever existed in comedy, and yet he did these insane <laughs> things, like throw wow. twenty grand into the ocean. Like, who does that? Actually, I, I bought I actually social think... tickets, and I wanted to throw yeah. up that. That's so yeah. <laughs> I think that's why NFL is played on Sunday, because they know people it's, are are going to be hungover. Mm -hmm. And a, you make bad decisions and you're chasing a feel good. Mm. So they're like, if all our games are on Sunday, right. people are more than likely to make bad decisions. Like if we played on Friday, and people it, are going to be like, I need my money for the weekend. And, yeah. it's, a, and it's a holy day. Please, God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly everyone's religious at noon on Sunday. <laughs> uh, so I was listening to a podcast and the host is a really, really big, a Chicklets podcast, that one of the hosts is a really big degenerate gambler, but he's good at it. I don't know how you get good at it. You just well, get no, lucky no. or... Nobody's good at it. They only tell you about the wins. I yeah. guess, yeah, yeah. But yeah. So one of his wins was he bet... What was it? It was the Broncos and who that didn't get a touchdown all game. Oh, yeah, Broncos and Indy. He put a G yeah. down on it that no one was going to sort a touchdown. Love it. And everyone's like, how do you know that that's going to happen? He won like... 20 you don't know. grand or something insane he wanted it literally he's like cheering for Ru russell to like yep. don't fight no don't he's like cheering for him not to be a good quarterback yep. <laughs> like that's now that's probably more fun than cheering for your team to win totally what you guys are it, talking about yeah that's <laughs> it, the, the nice thing about certain, certain things like that is like i stay away from my teams mm. i used to stay away because you just do just straight money money line win loss mm. but now where it's you're like bias no touchdowns in the first half or whatever I can start like throwing money on the Bears to like perform poorly mm -hmm. but not hoping that they lose mm -hmm. yeah. you know what I mean yeah and so uh, <laughs> there, there's so many ways to to entertain yourself Live. by the way I'd like to thank your Bears for blowing the game on Thursday night because it made <laughs> great, great for my Vikings <laughs> Man, <laughs> oh, the Bears aren't a threat this year. No, no, <laughs> no neither are the Lions, neither are the Packers. The Vikings have the AFC yeah. North wrapped up. Yeah, yeah, and totally. they're not even that good. And, and the problem is, is that uh, she's always uh, cousins. Mm. Uh, they're going to win the division, <laughs> yeah. but he sucks in the playoffs, so there'll be a first round exit like every other. Year. On, I, are we getting into NFL? Can we oh get yeah, go for it. Yeah, right. yep. Kirk Cousins on paper is an incredible quarterback, but he's never going to lead you to the promised land. I mean, never. keep in mind he was a he was the franchise tag in Washington before he left. Yeah. I mean, he's a good statistical quarterback, yeah. but I wouldn't trust him in the pocket if he was my quarterback. Nope. He'll get you a playoff bonus, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. You know what quarterback I really like? Tia or Tua, his name is. He's uh. been really crushing lately. <laughs> No, oh, he's been getting crushed lately. Yeah. Uh, that by the way, is oh. disgusting. He makes my brain look healthy. Yeah, he yeah. makes Dave CT look like he just got a headache. That brings up my point of the only time a football team should be playing a Thursday night football game is if they're coming off a bye week. That's yeah. it. That's the the only scheduling time. is so bad. Terrible. Just get rid of TNF. Like, yep. it, it's 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 a 
a money grab that's not going well. I agree. The advertising tweets I dollars. see are like, please, for the love of God, don't play Thursday night football anymore. Anything. Yeah. I'd rather watch a bad halftime show it's, than like... It's, it's terrible. <laughs> By the way, is Tua cleared to play... I hope not. He uh, should he's never, not playing this week. He should okay. never but he is resuming football, football activity. The, the, the PA is going to sue the league. They have to. They have to. Oh, have to yeah. yeah. I mean, That's that, yeah. that kid's going to die. Um, the, when you see him on the floor and he's like uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, cerebral palsy, and it's like, what are... How yeah. do you... Oh, my God. Like, how do you put him in the game? Like, and it's, it's one thing they're like... They're gambling on him to get a concussion. With, with concussions, game, like... like when the body stiffens and the arms come up, that's is one thing. Scary. But he went like salad fingers. Yeah. And you're like, that's next level of your brain. Just like, I'm doing control alt delete. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. I, I, between my son having epilepsy when he was born and my mother going through brain surgery to have an aneurysm re removed, there's two things. One thing that I've learned between those two experiences that is technologically advanced, we are not as smart as we are as humans in the medical field. We don't have a clue what's going on in the brain. No. Like, nope. We haven't even scratched the surface. We nope. do know that when you get a concussion, it's your brain bouncing against your skull and it bruises. Yeah. But we don't really... I mean, all these CTE things that we're doing yeah. now, we're, we're getting an idea, but we still don't have a clue. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how they would do it because, again, we don't have a clue, but a living study of CTE needs to be done somehow. Take an Antonio Brown... Uh, Antonio Brown, right? That's the name. Yeah, the yeah. psycho. Take take someone <laughs> someone like him who has shown this this wild behavior. Is there not a way to study his brain while he's living, where you go because he he he's got to have something going on, yeah, and and start to learn about CTE in a living body mm -hmm. where you can identify it and take someone like Tua and just be like, look, man, take your guaranteed money and live a healthy life because you take another couple hits. And your family's probably going to end up in your deep freezer in 20 years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're go all Chris Benoit. Yeah, I was just going to say, we have a, we have a yeah. good friend of the show named Chris Benoit. Oh, really? Like a, <laughs> no, 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 no. Alive? Okay. No, no. He um, said, I we, miss my we, family. We've, we've I joked never miss from close range. We always <laughs> joke around about Chris Benoit on the show, just how outrageous he is. <laughs> so was, so horrible. Was. Um, what a great well, joke. It's the part of jokes. It's that it's, they're funny and they're not whatever. But... Uh, Ah oh, shit! I was forgot where I was even going with it. Oh, I was gonna say maybe Kanye West has CTE because he's another one that's just a complete loose cannon. And I'll, then I'll tell you a quick story. So that I was reading this paper from this uh, university professor, and he uh, studied. He's a psychologist, and he had studied like Jeffrey Dahmer and Ted Bundy and a lot of oh, these wow. people, and then they had brain scans. They didn't get one of Dahmer, but a lot of the other ones. And he said one thing they all had in common is they were missing a certain something in their frontal cortex where they did not show compassion or empathy. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. He decided to do a closed case study on his uh, on his staff and his uh, students and it was all nondescript so we didn't know who the names were but everyone went got a ct scan so he's going through the data and out of the 50 or 60 people there was only one person that was missing that frontal cortex and it was him oh no way really? himself it was himself and it, wow. doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that he's a psychopath but he does lack the empathy like and when his colleagues found out about this they were asking him questions and stuff like when you have a a gathering at your house for dinner or whatnot. How do you feel? He goes, to be honest with you, I always sit around going, what the fuck are these people doing eating my food? <laughs> wow. Right, you know what I mean? So he started recognizing things. Doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be a, you know, a killer, but these killers that do these things, when they do it, they don't feel any emotion. No. To them, it's just, cool, I got to see the inside of a body. Yeah. You know, there's just yeah. zero empathy there for anything else but their families for nothing. I yeah. would love to get Tia to get one of those. I don't think she has that. She's for sure missing whatever. <laughs> just because she doesn't like you. I, yeah. <laughs> she tolerates you. I mean, we she can double down on that. Reason. No one's ever seen Tia in public, so we don't even know who is. <laughs> There's uh She's I missing mean, that thing. She doesn't like leaving the house. We've all gotten so good with Photoshop. You could have found something and My and kid has a little mask, pictures. so like, we don't know where the kid came from. <laughs> No one saw your child being born. You could have... Telling you... Know. you yes, it's, it's me who's missing it, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Projections in my house. Um, so we can't go back to Wheeler and the radio, I guess. I don't know where we're supposed to go with CTE and Chris Benoit, but the uh, worst we do, we transition do have to talk, in history. We do have to talk about uh, the uh, New York Jets, though, and how they're actually man managing to pull out some wins, which I never thought I would see this happen, <laughs> Yeah, true, ever. yeah. Well, they're playing Green Bay, and Green Bay looks pretty sketchy. When, when, when is this airing? Uh, it'll be up Thursday this Thursday. week. Okay, so the, so the games that just happened this past Sunday, I, I haven't watched the game yet, but I think the Jets have a shot to beat Green Bay. And if I'm right, I should have put money on that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the only um, time you ever win. I kind of have a theory with that, and I I, I follow NFL more than you guys do. Is it, is it the moms? Um, is it, is it the moms? <laughs> is that what does it? Is that their secret? Um, I mean, it's a good motivator. But uh, speaking of motivators, Robert Sala, as good as he's an X and O guy, he's a player's coach and he's a motivator. Mm. And say, same thing with Dan Campbell in Detroit. There's Love not that a, guy. Love that MCDC guy. MCDC is... Yeah. 
he, he's not like drawn up these these crazy plays, but you get guys to believe in you, and they'll go through a wall for you. Mm-hmm. And and same thing with Dabble in in New York. Um, is it the Ted Lasso effect? Totally, it might be. I, I I think that's what it is. It's yeah. just like you you go out for your guys and. And if, if you get a collection of, of 45 guys that are like, I'll go through hell with you, mm-hmm. not for you, but with you, they'll go out and win ball games that they shouldn't win. Mm-hmm. Then you get that and you throw some talent with it. Yeah. It's almost like Moneyball. Yeah. Uh, like the, mo- the movie Moneyball, yeah, yeah. which was a real oh, thing. Great movie. Is you get a superstar that can disrupt your locker room. Mm-hmm. What if you, you get a bunch of guys that are just scrappy and, and you go to war with that? Sure. You're going you're gonna to win fights that you shouldn't win you might not win win the war Mm -hmm. but you're gonna win some fights that you shouldn't win and i think that's the trend of the future of the nfl i learned something in she hulk because i'm a big marvel fan and i learned it from daredevil who was cameoing on the show and he said she said oh we're gonna go get all those henchmen he goes no those are goons and she goes, what's the difference he says henchmen believe in the cause goons are just paid hired yeah 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 Yeah, they're just hired they don't care that's such an interesting line i like that one Mm -hmm. um but isn't it in basketball you're only as good as your bench is it or like in hockey like you do like in hockey i always found like um, well, in basketball, one guy can literally change your entire team. That doesn't yeah, happen in hockey. But I couldn't no. remember. But yeah, because like if there was paper or on paper, like you'd think Ovi would score ten goals a game. He'd mm-hmm. just be Gretzky all over again, right? But in hockey, I always found it better to have four lines of players who are good rather than Toronto having their all star front line. And then I said that about zero, Colorado this year. Zero what depth. You, you you have like sixty percent of your salary invested in your first line, right? How do you fill out your other three lines? You yeah. can't. They're, they're, they're so can half you get an hour 20 minutes of great hockey, yeah. but what do you do for the other 40? Well, look what McCrimmon did in, in Vegas, and they're, they've changed the rules for the expansion yeah. draft now. But yeah. it's, it's, yeah. That was yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially what he did is he drafted four second lines. And that's, Every yeah. time he put a line out there, it was a second line, second yeah. line, second yeah. line, second line. And, and I, he, they made it the Stanley Cup Finals, man. Their first and, year and their, in the league. Their first year. And then Seattle's like, what about us? Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> Talk to Vegas. They ruined it for you. You go 0-82 and you like it. Yeah, exactly. uh, no, yeah. but I, I, I was never understood why teams like Toronto, like McKinnon's making, was it $12 million a year he's making? He's 11? a top-paid top paid player. He's making more than McDavid now. Significantly yeah. more, too. And that's like, what a Stanley Cup ring will do. Yeah, insane. Yeah. Speaking of rings, did you see the video they posted of the rings? No. So they came in a box and... When you opened the box, there was a small projector projecting to the top of the lid the moment they won the Stanley Cup. What? Yeah. yeah. And then. How do you uh, wear that on your ring or on your finger? I, I think you it's just wear. the presentation. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. It's the whole box. <laughs> but uh, the ring was okay, but Tampa Bay's last year spun. That was insane. Yeah. Uh, I think the Rams Super Bowl ring opened. If I'm not mistaken, you I think put it's your right. weed in there. <laughs> <laughs> it was a grinder. <laughs> um, but you, you open the top of the ring. And when it opened, the inside was uh, their stadium. Come on. What? Wow. Like, That's can you imagine winning a Super Bowl in the 80s? Like when the Niners won in four Super Bowls and you've got like, it looks like a wedding ring or something and you'd buy at uh, whatever jewelers. Mm-hmm. And these rings that these guys are getting now are like, they're, they're insane. But it, it's part of, of winning. Well, where it's just... I, I, this is very coincidental, but I actually had this conversation uh, last night. A buddy of mine, he they got one of the replica ones from the Bombers. And it, it's heavy. It's oh, D. Hooker had one. D. Hooker had one. Aren't they cool? That's okay. very cool. But, yeah. but you put it on, you realize, you go, like, you, you can never wear this out. I mean, you see the uh, analysts and whatnot, uh, they'll wear them on the TV broadcast yeah. or they'll wear that at a, a dinner or whatnot, but you're not wearing That's, that to go to Sev. Yeah. Right? No. Um, so the year yeah. <laughs> uh, I missed my fifth year with the Bisons because uh, of concussions, actually. So um, they they won I'm the Vanier that by the way. That's yeah, nice. yeah. Um, they won the Vanier Cup the year after, Shit. and people were like, you know, do you miss? Like, would have been cool to win, and and you could have had the ring. And I'm like, I would have gave my dad the ring, and he would have had it on his desk. Like, mm-hmm. you don't wear like like you said, you don't wear. You go to an event, but. Mm-hmm. There's no events for uh, Canadian college football players, right. so it, it the it would have been for my dad 100. percent You know what I mean? The it memories are the memories are for me. Yeah, but the the tangible goods are. Well, he's the guy driving you to practice when you're young. So, he's the one sitting in the yeah. Stands when 17 it's cold. years of yeah. of uh, pacing the sidelines in minus 30, watching me practice. Like not, uh, not to bring up a triggering name, but Bill Cosby did this great <laughs> bit way back in the 70s. One of my he, favorite comics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, uh, and he goes, you know, yeah. You bring your kid to football every practice, and you're there when it's cold, and you're doing all these things. And finally, he gets a scholarship, and he plays four years, and then he finally goes pro, and he scores the winning touchdown. And they get him on camera, and the first thing he says is, "Hi, mom." <laughs> <laughs> totally. Uh, uh, 
what the hell was I going to say? Uh, oh, yeah, I saw a video, one of my favorite videos online right now. It's like Tom Brady. It's like shots of Tom Brady with his family. And then, oh, that and then made goes, me laugh. Psyched, and it's just him with the five rings, and the family's gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good. <laughs> had that conversation last night, too. I mean, Tom Brady has more Super Bowl rings than any other team in the yeah. entire league. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't think there's any debate anymore. I mean, he's the greatest no. of all time. You, you can't argue that. Like, like him or not. Jordan, LeBron, Kobe. Uh, I was actually, because we're, we're talking about doing a Mount Rushmore episode of, of different things. Mm. And I was like, who would hockey be? The Mount Rushmore greatest so Gretzky. hockey players? So, so you have number one in hockey, Gretzky. But how do you fill out the next four or five? Well, and he, there's probably people that would argue that Gretzky might not be the best, which to me is crazy. But if you watched in the 60s and 70s, you might have your guys before Gretzky that you could argue like... Well, what's the criteria? Because there's, just, there's only five guys in NHL history that have scored over 150 points. Okay, and I'm going to give them to you. It's Gretzky, Lemieux, Eiserman, Esposito, and Bernie Nichols. <laughs> So Who the hell is Bernie Nichols? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and that's when he played on the wing with Gretzky in LA. Right. Yeah, so no, based on criteria of points, is he yeah. even considered? He might not make the rush more, but is his name even in the mix? Probably not. Yeah. Just because he was only good with Gretzky. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the criteria? It's tough. I mean, it, it's hard. Rod it, Langway, probably one of the greatest defensemen that is underrated. He was captain of the Capitals. I mean, the guy had maybe two goals his entire career, but his shins looked like grated cheese for the amount of shots that he blocked. Is yeah. he considered? I mean, what's the criteria? It's a tough yeah, one. I it's think tough. it's your personal, like, who do you think is the four greatest hockey players of all yeah. time? There's four guys on Rushmore. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think it just have to be come down to you. Like, uh, But you come back, sorry, but you come back, there's no disputing that Tom Brady... Yeah. Is, is the greatest. He's the greatest. You know what I mean? There's, uh, he's he surpassed Montana. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, I don't think there's a conversation to be had outside of him. Now, has Tom Brady ever been in an Ace Ventura movie? Uh, no, he hasn't. <laughs> so is Dan uh, Who's in Ted? <laughs> Was he really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's got a new movie coming out actually he's producing and uh, co-starring in this movie about these four Sorry, women Tom or Ace Tom <laughs> Tom uh, he's got this movie coming out they're going back in time to Super Bowl 54 I think and these uh, three best friend women are on a pilgrimage to go see the football game and in, in, I think it was in Miami that year and Tom Brady's going to be in it because, really? he's, because he played in the Super Bowl that year oh yeah, it's like it, like some you can Google it if you want to I can't remember their names but it's like some classic names that you remember like they're golden girls now but yeah Interesting. I'll go watch it. Yeah, what, I'm a, in. what a premise. Oh, yeah, Tom. Kiss the Ground? No, that's a documentary. No, not that one. Tom um, Brady. Yeah, there we go. Jane Fonda. Road Trip. Something about a road trip. Yeah, yeah. Inspired by a true story. <laughs> yes, there you go. Oh, wow. yeah. I know all those faces. I couldn't tell you one of their names. Lily Tomlin, Jane Fonda, Sally Field, and Rita Moreno. He She's, didn't read that either. He knew that right away. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Those ladies were in my spank bank. In the <laughs> They're still in Brett's, Except actually. Except for me yeah. and Rita Marino. Yeah. Tom Brady's no, Tom in Brady's. Brady's. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Brady's in Dave's. He's got a thing for chiseled jaws. <laughs> chiseled um, jaws and freshly divorced men. Now, to stay on the Tom Brady thing, but to get off the sports, is there anywhere else in the world where your wife can expect you to retire at 45? Yeah. yeah. If you're a post carrier yeah. and your wife's like, you do one more year of delivering mail, we're getting a divorce. You're I like, I'm goes, only 45. I think it goes deeper than that. I think it's deeper than the whole retirement thing because the whole idea of him retiring was he was going to go over to Miami, be part of the ownership group, be in the box. And then yeah. they're going to be like, well, since you're part owner, you can actually go play. And then he was going to play a couple more years in Miami. Yeah. Now yeah. they ended up getting dinged for that big time. So I think she would have been okay with that. Yeah, but I, I think it goes deeper than than just the retiring unretiring thing. They can't like yeah. yeah. He just wears all the rings all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, you you can't. I don't. I don't know. Eight more months of football that would crumble a marriage. Right. And they've been together yeah. for a long time. There have been no history of problems. Mm. Um, He's been pretty she's still clean. the breadwinner, mm -hmm. uh, to my understanding. Really? So there has to be wow. deeper seated issues than than just that. But yeah. is that not He's the... on the Epstein flight list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that not the... <laughs> He's worth about 250 schmill, and I think she's well over uh, 600. Really? Five or wow. 600, yeah. She's a Victoria's Secret model? Oh, she was, was an everything model. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is that the second Victoria's Secret model to have a marriage crumble? Adam Levine's crumbled too? Is it falling apart? I think... Is it fake? He said it's all fake, but we made too many memes about it to be fake. So um, I, I don't think it could be fake. I had no idea who was. I, all I knew was the, the those text, text messages. It's so yeah. easy to fake text messages, though. It could it yeah. could very well be fake. 
it's really yeah. easy to, to fake interviews these days with all these deep fakes and whatnot. Oh, yeah. you had Scarlett Johansson on your old podcast. So there's Is that who? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? I missed that. Scarlett, Scarlett Johansson. Johansson. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was the old Weird Al interview. Yeah, that was great. Oh, yeah, I love her, this. Her, her and I, her and I jumped in the shower together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Uh, well, they just somebody put together a deep fake where Joe Rogan interviews uh, Mac founder. What the hell's his name? The oh, of, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. Yeah, right. they just had they did a deep fake where he literally or they, sorry not deep fake it was an AI mm. generated interview between Joe Rogan and him. and it sounds like they're having a legit conversation with each other. Wow. Yeah. The, God, the Ro, Joe Rogan meets Ro Jogan when it's him interviewing himself. <laughs> yeah. I still will go back and watch that and cry <laughs> laughing. Um, damn, is that funny? Uh, wow, I don't know where to go after an NFL, a deep dive into the NFL. Wrap it up, Tom yeah. Brady. Yeah, it up. I guess yeah. we'll always a, leave the audience wanting yeah, more. Yeah, that's an hour, yeah. so we can. Uh, we'll just have to have him back. That's all I guess. Yeah. We'll just have Dave. Anything back. you want to share with any yeah, of our yeah. listeners? Uh, check out the podcast. Uh, I also do a daily podcast, Wheeler in the Morning, with Jasmine Lane and Tyler Carr. Uh, that comes out uh, every single day. Oh, well, my phone's blowing up here. Who's calling me? Um, yeah, you can download that daily variety podcast. It's just over an hour long. I have a lot of fun with it. Uh, I, I, I'm 43, and I have a 28 and a 26 year old that I get to have fun with every morning. Yeah, so perfect. That's great. The, uh, the age gap, like that, that's one of our strengths. Oh, big time. Uh, yeah. is, isn't it fantastic big to time. get uh, different points of view? Although, for a dipshit, you're a bit of an old soul, too. I think I've just come into being an old soul. Like, I got Probably married. too much time with us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I yeah. think it's just I grew up real quick. Like, no, I no, bought Denzel's, a house, had a kid, and got married Den, all within a year. Denzel's so. Denzel's smart. If you want to feel young, hang out with older guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 100%. <laughs> I can get um, up, my knees don't crack, yeah. I can walk. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, but you're, when you hang out with your peer group, they have the same stories as you. They live the same life. When you, when you get outside of that, mm. um, like even now, clients of mine that have turned friends that are in their 50s and 60s, you start to learn about life mm. a lot more than, sure. you know, when I hang out with other 40-year-olds, you're like, yeah, everything, you're telling me stuff I already know. Well, ben, ben Shapiro always says, I'd much rather sit down with somebody that I disagree with than somebody I agree with. Yeah. At least I'm going to learn something. Yeah, mm. exactly. Yeah. Wow, wow Benjamin. We just turned into an ending on a yeah. Yeah. All right, we got to wrap up on that. Uh, thank you so much for your time. This, this was fantastic. Great. Long overdue. Great to, have you. Great to finally meet you. Yeah, it's a yeah. pleasure. Yeah. Um, We're friends. You've now. probably heard a lot about me, and it's great for you <laughs> like to meet I said, me. Man, I follow the pod. I follow the pod. It's all good. We no, love the comments on the YouTube. Yeah, it's you get the first ever yeah. man in there. Yeah. Absolutely. That's become a joke in its own. The first. Even when I'm like third. And then Brandon Sutherland tried stealing it from me. A week after first. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, uh, fantastic. Great having you. That was great. Um, fi someone finally tops your radio voice. Yep. Oh, um, dude, this episode. Yeah. Dangerously <laughs> Incomparable, another another great podcast. Yep. We have a lot yep. of fun. Have you? And we've also got uh, devious Most Devious Bastards. Bastards. That's kind of, it's, uh, his brother's a comedian and myself sit down and we just... Nonsense. Rapid oh. fire, like it's it's some of the best. Like I didn't, like, I had no idea because I, I literally had like three conversations with this guy before we did this podcast, and the chemistry ended up working so well. It's just bam, 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 bam with the jokes and just stories. And yours, it's, it's one of my favorite things to do. Now, your and Garrett's chemistry almost rivals yours and Denzel's sexual tension, <laughs> and it's nice to see. <laughs> yeah, get out of there! <laughs> Give me that. Oh, you. Come on, show me it. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, I guess that's, we wrap up on that. This yeah, one, share, subscribe. Parkline Coffee. This is Sober October's wrapping up. Everyone's doing well. Uh, Pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> and you we'll know, wrap up. I, it's funny. I made it through five days in Folsom alone <laughs> without drinking. The second time you said Folsom. Are we talking about the prison? Like Johnny Cash, Folsom Prison? Blues? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Um, well, I'll, I'll tell a story when we when we wrap about that. Like that was the a... rings. It just never ends. It never yeah. Ends. yeah. <laughs> no, it, we're, we're good at that. <laughs> we wrapped the show like five times. But uh, made it through five days in Folsom without drinking. Six-hour layover in San five Francisco five without drinking. Wow. And then last night, the wheels completely fell off. Yeah. Yeah. I'm back on day one. Yeah. Um, but we're celebrating uh, Brett throwing his life away and um, engaged. I got married. Wow! Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and, there's, the ring was and uh, there's also a uh, little one on the way too. Come on! Yeah. 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 Who's the dad? <laughs> well, well, I don't know yet. <laughs> oh, stop! Speaking of the devil, of yeah, the devil, he will appear. Right. Let's wrap up. Now. All, right. All right, be a friend, tell a friend. Thank you for Kisses. listening, Dave. Thanks again. Thank you. Yep.